Hi, I'm Brian, and I'm really excited about this video. I've been doing probably two, three months worth of homework and preparation for it. I've been doing a lot of work centered around it, and it all started with a guy, username uh, Melancon64. I was watching 6540, he had a comment on his video. Um, uh, I don't want to discredit him in any way, but there's some things that I disagree with him on in the way he approached the problem that he's a uh, addressing but he really encouraged me and really got me excited about the topic and what the topic is is trailer towing safety there's a bunch of numbers and things that you gotta know and I'm gonna get right to it you've got uh, GVWR you've got GCWR and you've got GAWR and they all mean kind of the same thing with just slight variation um, this stands for vehicle, this stands for combined, and this stands for axle. Gross vehicle weight rating, gross combined weight rating. This is a truck. Uh, I'm not going to be a good artist right now. It's too late at night. So you got your truck and you got your trailer. So this is the combined weight rating. And this applies to the truck. How much can that thing tow? Combined weight rating includes the weight of the vehicle, that's people, fuel, and everything. Gross vehicle weight rating, um, your trailer has one, and your vehicle has one. And it has everything to do with your gross axle weight rating. How much weight can this axle take, and how much weight can this front and rear axle take? So we're going to talk about some of these things. Um, I'm also going to talk about some trailer safety stuff in another video. I've put a lot of homework into this, a lot of field study. Um, I went out and bought a bunch of hitch pins. This guy was, I mean, he's just on the rampage to try to get more legislation on uh, trailer inspections. There's federal laws, uh, highway safety stuff, and he wants it to be more strictly enforced and have inspections and everything. I don't blame him. I think something happened to him. Uh, with a family member to cause this all to happen. I'd like to take another approach. Rather than try to legislate everybody and have to bring more bureaucracy, machine, and weight, and uh, monstrosity to the thing, let's educate. You know, let's put these answers out there. I looked up these numbers and I didn't find as much information as I would like to uh, share or have people know or that I wanted to know. So that's why I'm making this video. That's kind of how I got into the YouTube thing to begin with is uh, valve adjustment. You know, there wasn't a lot of information. And so I put some information out there. It wasn't the best. It wasn't polished, but I got it done. So I kind of want to do the same thing here. This is exciting stuff is what it is. I mean, when you're buying a vehicle, if you're going to spend a lot of money on a truck or a lot of money on a trailer, you need to know this stuff. Um, it can save you money if you get a ticket, but most importantly, uh, you'll be going about it right and buying the right stuff and not overdoing it or not underdoing it. And uh, it's just awesome to know, you know, if somebody's like, well, what is this or what is that? You know, impress your friends. You get talking about trucks and talking with your guy friends at the gym or at the ball game or whatever, uh, you'll be in the know. You will look like a manly, smart man. Let's talk about some of these things and where you can get these numbers. I'm under a trailer and you can see the axle has a sticker on it. And the manufacturer tried to scrape the sticker off because they actually modified the label right there while I was there. So here's the, same, the sticker for said trailer and you can see that there's a shadow underneath. Um, but where it says 15,000 you see it used to say 14,000 and that would be accurate. I asked them because the website said that it should be uh, a 15,000 pound trailer uh, and they're like uh, yeah we'll take care of that we'll put a new sticker on it. So that's what they did but you see it says GVWR which stands for gross vehicle weight rating which is the total amount of weight that the vehicle uh, can take you know basically combine both of the axles how much weight can we put on both of those axles but you see it says GAWR 7,000 pounds GAWR stands for gross axle weight rating so you can see this one 7,000 pounds and because there's two axles and they're both rated for 7,000 pounds including this one and the weight rating of this trailer, or the GVWR if this counts as a vehicle, is 14,000 pounds. So how the heck are you supposed to know what your GVWR is, or your GCWR, or any of that kind of stuff is for the vehicle that you have? Well, 
you can look in the manual for one so here's the one for my truck mine's a quad cab four wheel drive now all of these things make a difference because if it's a quad cab that means the truck itself is heavier and if the axles are the same but the truck is heavier then you have less hauling capacity if you have four wheel drive then there's an additional weight to having the extra drive shaft and transfer case and everything that you need for four wheel drive including front axle so as we look at this um, you can see the GCWR or gross combined rating and you look down and at 16,000 if you got the 5 speed 2500 uh, with the Cummins the Cummins it's a heavier engine too so 16,000 pounds and you look here at 16,000, 18,000, 16,000, 18,000, 20,000 so what's interesting here is that the gear ratio even makes a difference you see this is the actual axle ratio uh, 3.55 to 1, 410 to 1, you know, 355 to 1. Mine happens to be the 355, so that my combined weight of everything is 16,000 pounds. So my trailer's a little overkill for what I'm doing, unless my truck weighs 1,000 pounds. But what this is, is the weight of the uh, trailer and cargo and everything, and the weight of the truck and everything. Um, the reason why the ratios make a difference is if you have to downshift to go up and down a hill, you read your whole manual will say if you're towing make sure to not have it in overdrive if you're going up or downhill to prevent unnecessary shifting frequency um, but also just even the gear ratio makes a difference which is interesting there's websites like dodge.com where you can go and check out what the towing capability is of a vehicle but you got to be careful because sometimes the web administration isn't doing their due diligence like the Dakota 7000 that's believable I buy that that sounds about reasonable 13550 but you go to the 1500 truck it says 18,450 that's a lawsuit waiting to happen the 450 is the same thing they didn't do it right see it's getting less and less and less and less what it should be if you go to the year newer to 2009 wait for it to reset and then look at the 1500 where it should be 9150 sounds reasonable that's half of what it was showing on the other one so ask yourself I mean it's just like when you get into advanced math or something and you go through so many steps to get somewhere you have to ask yourself is this reasonable is this answer reasonable for a 1500 for a half ton truck that is not a reasonable towing capacity so this is the factory receiver that came with the truck it only has three bolt holes and it's pretty thin gauge it's not very thick compared to the new one the new one has four bolt holes you're only supposed to use three for a short bed but I'm gonna go ahead and cut and bolt uh, four bolts just so that I have all that length reinforced and I mean what's one extra bolt gonna do it's gonna only help things but you look at the breakaway chain attachment points and they are just butch there's so much. I welded this because these look so messed up. People had been towing with it before me, um, pulling out bushes. I did it through the pin, you know, by putting the chain through there. Um, I welded an extra thing for my breakaway uh, cable, you know, for the emergency brake. I'm going to have to do that on this one, it looks like. But this thing is just so much more heavy duty. This one's rated um, 17,000 pounds uh, trailer weight distributing and 16,000 pounds otherwise, but it's got way more tongue weight, way more uh, set up to the thing. It's just awesome. This sticker is not awesome. <laughs> the sticker sucks. This one said 10,000 pounds. It was just really wimpy. Uh, the truck's rated to do 13,700. So and my trailer, you know, minus the weight of the trailer on those axles and tires, is weighted for about the same, about 13,700. So now I'll have the 13,700 as long as I can find a draw bar that is going to cut the mustard. Mine's only for 12,000. But anyway, it's better to be overrated than underrated, in my opinion, as far as your capacity. There's a couple of different draw bars. While they look pretty much similar, aside from this one being a 90 degree drop and this one dropping at more of a 30 degree angle, you'll notice when you look on the ends of them, this one's hollow and this one's solid. When you look at the GVWR on this one, it says uh, max load 5,000 pounds, tongue weight 500 pounds, it's classified V5. You look at this one 
it substantially everything about it is just so much thicker and heavier duty I mean just every part of it is just a lot more beefy the size of the shank on the ball is larger on this one you look at the weight rating on this and it is anybody see that yet 12,000 pounds so that's a lot heavier duty and the tongue weight is 1200 pounds you can see right there and when you look at the ball uh, the ball for this one is also 12,000 pounds look at this one and the ball says well it's all chewed up and shot but basically it's gonna say 5,000 pounds before you buy a truck or a trailer for that matter any vehicle you want to make sure it's gonna fit your needs safely otherwise you could find yourself like Raul here with a screaming kid in the back of the car several miles from home back of the vehicle sagging and uh, a trailer that's dragging on the asphalt the trailer that he's borrowing or the, the customer insisted they use to haul this stuff is only rated with a axle weight rating of 30,500 pounds but the load that he's hauling is somewhere around 10,000 pounds it didn't bode well for the axle you can see where it snapped the hub right off thanks for watching my video um, it's a little different than most of the videos that I do but I felt it was appropriate this channel and not the ski viking channel which is where I put all my play stuff if you'd like to see more videos like this please if, uh, click subscribe if you haven't already and click like uh, weigh in in the comments if there's anything that you saw that I said wrong I, I have slips of the tongue all the time so uh, feel free to let me know um, also, if there's any other kind of advice or counsel that you'd like to share with others, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. And uh, thanks again. I really appreciate your participation in the channel. And it's been a fun ride for me. I, I swear I learn more from these things than you guys do, you know, both in the preparation and also from the comments. So let me know. I'd appreciate it. Love you. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.